Looks like I got a fucking black eye. I got her. Right there. You can see my cheek. Me and my homie Bobby was down and <laughs> Cat calls it Crazy Bo. That's what we call it too. Casey Bo. Back in the day we was at a party and my homie Bobby got in a fight with this dude and it, it was a one-on-one -on -one fight, man. Fair fight, but Bobby whooped his ass and dude come back later on. I looked over and there's fucking Bobby fucking got fucking all these dudes around him, about seven dudes standing in a circle around him. Like, oh shit. So I stepped up, walked up the middle of the circle, and I looked at Bobby. I said, You ready? He said, Yeah, and I was turning around. I said, Back step. And we stepped back up out of that circle, and he went left, I went right. And keep him from getting around us. And Every step we take forward, they take two steps back. And this fucking thing here, man. And Bobby, uh, damn, it looks like I got a black eye. It's from that, both eyes do that, but this one's real bad because of the scar there. Every step we take forward, they go two backwards. Bobby goes, man, they ain't nothing but a bunch of fucking bitches. And I fucked up. I fucked up big time. I know better. I took my eyes off of them and caught a full bottle. By the time I looked back, ca caught a full bottle of Bud Budweiser, Bud Long Neck, right to the fucking face, man. And uh, it sucked. Hit me in the forehead. I got a scar goes right there. And it just shattered down on my fucking face. I had stitches I had to get in my eyelid. This part, there's just that chunk, whole chunk of meat was hanging on my side of my face. You can see my cheekbone. I got stitches on the side of my nose, tip of my nose, my eyelid. Uh, and Bobby goes, I didn't even know I got hit. Bobby goes, dude, look at your face. And I, then that's when all the blood started running in my eyes. I couldn't even fucking see shit. And Bobby does this crazy, ay, 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 ay. He does like this crazy fucking Indian war cry. And I knew he was attacking. And I was just, anybody I get a hold of, but I, try to get them by their hair because you got them by the back of the head you can control their neck and it's like hitting the palm of your hand you can't you can't miss their fucking face unfortunately well we, we cleared that fucking house out it was him and me and I couldn't see shit I had blood running down in my eyes and uh Unfortunately, fucking I knocked a bitch out. Fucked a couple dudes up too, but fucking I couldn't see. So I'm not gonna take credit for, I just, whoever I get a hold of, I was hitting. And uh, he drove me to the hospital. Man, that sucked. Tip of the nose, that, sticking that needle in to suture me up. Talk about pissed off, man. I kept, I kept saying, I'm gonna kill that motherfucker. I'm gonna kill that motherfucker. Found out who he was. Kept calling him out. His dad was a Caseyville fucking cop, too. Bobby's like, you know you take him out, fucking his dad. The, the, the cops are gonna look for you until they find you. I kept calling him out. He wouldn't fight me. I was pissed. Come 
come back from Arizona and Bobby's constantly. Man, I'm sorry about your face, bro. Fucking every time he sees them scars, I was like, man, fucking. Finally, I was getting angry because he kept saying he's sorry and shit. I remember one night, I got in a fight with state wrestling champ. I didn't know he was the state wrestling champ, but we were frying our brains out. I mean, frying hard. This is back when they had the purple micro dot. It wasn't that paper blotter LSD. It was purple. They had purple micro dot, green window pane. God damn thing. Sorry, Lord. Uh, orange. Microdot, purple microdot, green window pane, all that shit was going around. Real good fucking acid. Frying our brains out, man. I mean, I was frying hard. And we'd come up to this four-way stop, to stop signs, and there's a truck in front of us, and I don't know what the fuck I was thinking, man. I jumped out of the back seat of the four-door car, and I ran up and I fucking started punching the fucking side of the truck. Well, they punched, punched, punched it and went up through the four-way and pulled up into that damn florist right there. And, uh, son of a bitch, fucking. By the time I ran across the street, because I see him going in that parking lot, dude gets out the passenger seat, and I hit him dead in the forehead. He went backwards up against the truck, and I char I fucking charged him again. Next thing I know, man, fucking he scooped me up. I was on my back. Well, here come Bobby. Boom! Kicked him in the face like a football, man. Like he was putting a football. Knocked that motherfucker out. It was state wrestling champ, though. Uh, and he put me on my fucking back with the quickness after he took one in the forehead. But Bobby's like, dude, what are you doing? I said, I don't know, dude. He said, let's get out of here. Fucking the driver never got out of the car. But there's been many times my brothers fucking had my back, too, you know. And I go, dude, what are you doing? Bobby's the, my brother. He's fucking my age, he still gets in the mosh pit. He's got false teeth. His teeth almost come out one time. That was at that uh, Lamb of God Mega Death concert a few years back. And then he had on, I don't know why he wore them shoes, like a $300 pair of Nikes. And his one shoe come off in the pit. And his cousin Heather was there. We all call her cousin Heather. And I said, Bobby, she fucking shoe come off in the pit. She, she goes, did he get it back? I said, fuck yeah, he got it back. <laughs> what my feet of motherfucker that tried to keep it? The whole pit will be swirling in a circle and Bobby will be going the opposite direction and they just go around him, man. Every once in a while there'll be somebody that'll bang with them in there, but Every concert, you want to get to the front row, we just follow Bobby's wake, man. Every concert, front row. Every time, uh, oh, back to what I was saying, Bobby's the one that turned me on to that genre of music. Uh, he had Slayer South of Heaven on cassette tape. He goes, man, check this out. And at that time, I was jamming on Led Zeppelin, Deep Purple, uh, hum, you know, fucking Humble Pie, Nazareth, shit like that. And he, he gave me the headphones and I was listening to it. I said, I can't understand a fucking thing you're saying. And he gave me this fucking thing. He gave me the the words, the, the lyrics in the cassette. And I was looking at the lyrics while the songs were going on. I said, yeah, man, this is cool, you know? 
at Slayer South of Heaven. And uh, when I started listening to that music, the first concert I ever went to in that genre, Bobby bought the tickets for it. He goes, I got tickets, dude. I go, what is it? And it was White Zombie. I want to say Anthrax and White Zombie. Or Biohazard and White Zombie. One of, no, it was, it was White Zombie and fucking uh, Anthrax. And my very first time getting in the mosh pit. I got in the mosh pit, man. I'm banging around. Everybody's banging around. This dude fucking, I caught an elbow right to the nose. And you know that feeling <laughs> when you get hit in the nose? Well, I grabbed hold of the dude. I threw him down and I'm fucking kicking him and shit. <laughs> the next thing I know, Bobby's like, dude, and he grabbed hold of me. He goes, what are you doing? I said, the motherfucker hit me in the fucking nose with an elbow. He goes, you're supposed to help him up. If you can't play right, don't get in the pit, he said. <laughs> I didn't know the rules, man. But Bobby, you know, whenever, I remember uh, it was a uh, Five Finger Death Punch and uh, Anthrax, or no, Megadeth. Last time Megadeth was in town in the Who, H-U, Who, and fucking Bobby, man. After that, at the end, of it, he brings these knee braces and shit for when, when the concert's over. Autumn ears roofing. And Bobby's not fat, but he's a big dude. He's like six foot, 260 pounds. You got like a linebacker build to him, you know? He'd have made a great tackle as, as aggressive as he is, but that motherfucker, after that concert, we were all frying on shrooms, hard, hard frying on shrooms, man. And <laughs> fucking, oh, Terry, he brought an eighth of, eighth of shrooms for everybody, and gave it to me and I just took fucking a little bit and I thought it was like, <laughs> I didn't know what it was fucking and he goes how much did you take and I said I just took half of it he goes that was an eighth and I said it was an eighth he goes yeah he took 12 grams Terry did Terry was a flag holder whenever I got down to Menard uh <laughs> Man, he was freaking out, dude. It, 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 I could feel it coming off of him. I could see it in his eyes. I said, Terry, you all right? He goes, dude. What I was feeling coming off of him is like he was on the yard. He was getting ready to throw elbows and shit, man. He was, he was freaking out. I said, Terry, you're with brothers. Everything's cool, you know. Fucking, uh, hey, beautiful. I was talking about that night we went to the concert and Terry did 12 grams of shrooms. But uh, Bobby, he come running up to me and he, or he goes, I'll be back. Me and Bobby were in the middle and I'm watching the, li I'm watching the light show. And I'm like, wow, <laughs> you know, I'm frying my brains out. And Bobby goes, I'll be back. And he takes off running and he kind of arcs. And I'm like, well, I'll just wait here. He'll be back, you know. Oh, no. What? What? This is not a big deal. I left my phone on my desk. You want me to turn around? Oh, no, it's in my pocket. Okay. And my eyes look like they're black. That one always does because of that scar. But Bobby, <laughs> Bobby arcs off. I'll, and I'm like, well, I'll stay here like a kid, you know, it's lost in the store, he'll be back. Fucking, all of a sudden, out of nowhere, fucking, I get grabbed from behind, and I turned, and I was gonna punch whoever it was. Fucking, and it was Bobby, fucking, and I, I caught myself, and he's, he, he's seen it, he was starting to pull back. I said, dude, and he's just, 
his hair is just like he's been swimming or something. Just covered in wetness. And I said, dude, where were you? He goes, he goes in the pit. I go, where's the pit? He goes, right behind you. And I turn around like five foot behind me is the mosh pit all just swirling and shit. Like five foot right behind me and I didn't even notice it. <laughs> but after that concert was over and shit, every concert, fuck it, he's just covered in sweat. He puts those knee braces on because his knees are killing him. And, but that's how, that's why I go to the concerts anymore is because Bobby's like a kid in a candy store, man. We'll be all kind of lollygagging. And Bobby would be look, turning around, looking and shaking his head. And, Come on, man, you know. <laughs> the last one was at what, like 8 o'clock at night, 7 o'clock at night. He calls me at 7 in the morning. He goes, I'm ready to go, man. I says, not till tonight, Bobby. He goes, I know, I'm ready, though. <laughs> it's just, it, it, that's how he lets the shit out in a positive way, you know. Uh, just lets it all out. And he don't go in the pit with the intention of fucking people up and hurting people. Uh, he goes in there just bang and fucking just, you know, let it all out, man. He just totally covered like he's been swimming in sweat. But I go to watch Bobby. I just smile watching him. And he takes... He's got all these concert shirts from all these concerts we've been to. And he takes them to every concert. And fucking, which is kind of crazy, but we hold security on them shirts like a motherfucker. Uh, that's his happiness though, man. That is Bobby's happiness. Say it's what, Tuesday? Yeah. You okay? Yeah. You're beautiful. Fucking Bobby, man. One night, me and Tommy, I don't think I've told you guys this story. My buddy Tommy. Me and Amy, how long were we married that night with Detective Ellis? I don't think we were married. We weren't married yet. We were living in the apartments, weren't we? We were living in the apartment, but I don't think we were married just yet. Fucking me and my buddy Tommy was out at the bar. And me and Amy, had, we were living in just friends' couches for a while and then got the hotel. and Then we finally got an apartment. Me and Tommy's out partying. And we're walking down the street, walking back home, just stumbling drunk. All kinds of fucked up. <laughs> Detective Ellis pulls over. And he goes... <laughs> he, he goes... Get in the car, I'll give you guys a ride home, you're drunk. And Tommy goes, okay. And I... I fucking pushed Tommy. And he fell down. And I said, fuck you, I don't want to ride. And fuck, I pushed Tommy and fell down. And he's chasing me, Tommy is, he's pissed because I pushed him down. And I'm just laughing so hard, I got tears rolling down my face. We're running around Detective Ellis' car. Well, finally he gets us in the car and he let Tom out and I passed out. And he kept waking me up. Mark, where do you live? And I'd say, it's none of your fucking business where I live, motherfucker. Fucking, well, finally he kicked me out of the car. And next thing I know, I'm fucking stumbling. I wake up the next morning on the train tracks, sleeping on the fucking train track. But Tommy, Tommy calls Amy, is Mark home? And Amy goes, no. And Tommy goes, click, hangs up the phone. He did that a few times, and then the last time he called, Amy goes, Tommy, don't you hang up the phone. Where's Mark? And he goes, 
Last time I seen him, he was in the back of Detective Alice's car. Fuck it. That was hilarious. I was like, I don't want no fucking ride. Tommy goes, I'll take a ride. I, I pushed that motherfucker. He fell down and got all kinds of pissed off. Me and Tommy's been in a bunch of fist fights with each other. We fought one time all the way from up on Illinois. It'd be North Illinois, where Elderberries was. We fought from there all the way to Belleville, the old Belleville West High School. But a lot of that was in the back of Dwayne Totleben's car. Fucking, we got an argument over who the barmaid liked more, me or him. She probably didn't like neither one of us. Well, we got into pretty bad that night. Tommy, man, it don't, just, he, he wasn't very fast at all. When he cocked back to hit you, you'd have time to figure out where you wanted to move and where you wanted to hit him. But Tommy just keeps coming, man. I mean, there, every time me and him fought, I had to pull a knife out and put it to his throat. I got tired of hitting him. Uh, he's just, there's no quitting the dude. He just keeps coming. First night I met him, we was at a party. I can't remember who was with it. it might have been Dave Conklin. I can't remember who was with me that night, but Tommy got into it with these dudes. And these motherfuckers flipped the kitchen table over and ripped the wooden legs off and were, I mean, beating the brakes off them with these wooden legs off this kitchen table. And he's a mess. And they just keep beating him. He keeps coming swinging. I mean... After a little bit of that, I said, fuck that. I'm helping him. I got up. And whoever's with me jumped in, too. And that's how I met Tom. And that night, that I almost got shot because I yanked that baton out of that female cop's hand. Gabby Rush would save my ass that night. Tommy got jumped by a bunch of dudes, and they gave him a pumpkin head, man. Bad pumpkin head. His whole head, face was all swollen up. And uh, we found out where they were. What's that road runs up down by Motomart there? Uh, where we did Robin's Roof when we came back. It goes up by Don Kaffner's, or Mitch and Nancy's. No, it comes off of Main Street. There's Moto, and then you turn left, and you go up and by the pink bar and all that. The road that turns right off of Main Street there. It's where the Moto Mart is. And then it splits into two. Main Street splits into two if you keep going past it. F Street's the, where the county jail is. You live, if you go down F Street from your house, and then you go left to Motomart, that street. Where Mitch, where, right, so if you go up F Street past the jail. Yeah, and then you go left where, and past Mitch and Nancy's. Well, mine was 2nd Street. Well, he lived in between Mitch and Nancy. The Kittermans were third. He lived in between Mitch and Nancy's and Moto. Like two houses down from Mitch and Nancy's Fifth, is where Boss was living. What, what, and all them dudes were over there. And we were walking by the pink barn, and I looked down the alley, and there was a whole group of dudes coming down the alley. I said, who the fuck is that? And we stopped, and it was Dwayne, Brad, Brian, and that whole group. And uh, that's when we merged. Those two groups merged together. I go, what are you guys doing here? They said, we heard what happened to Tommy, man. We want some. We went over there, and I, I told everybody before we got there, I said, we are not going up in the house. I'm not catching a fucking home invasion tonight. It's 6.30 in Illinois. Get these motherfuckers to come out. Oh, and they was, we, we was calling them bitches and punks, you name it. Well, finally, they step out onto the front porch, and as soon as they did, 
it was like close encounters or third kind just boom 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 lights coming on everywhere fucking cops everywhere and fucking this fucking it's the only it's the first time I ever seen a female Belva cop never seen I've seen them in the county jail COs but never a female officer and she's all poking me in the stomach with her nightstick What's your name? What's your name? And I told her my name. She goes, oh, I heard of you. You think you're a real tough guy. And she kept poking me. And I yanked that motherfucker right up out of her hand. And that was a big mistake. Because motherfuckers were pulling their pistols. And Gabby stepped in front of me. He was a sergeant. He said, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Fucking, they didn't shoot me. But he said, Mark, let me talk to you. And we walked about a block down the road. And he said, I took the report on time. I saw time. We knew you were coming. We knew you guys were coming. He said, you know, just whatever you're going to do, just don't do it in Belleville. He's he probably saying, he, and then he said, don't ever, ever do that again. He said, they are very protective of the female officers. He said, you almost got yourself shot. He's the one that sent me that, gave it to my lawyer in an envelope whenever they were looking for me for robbing that gas station. He said, uh, you turn yourself in. Do not turn yourself in to city, turn yourself into county. He said, city does not want to arrest you. And I knew exactly what the fuck that meant. That meant, uh, turn myself into county. And that's what I did. It was fucked up. They were kicking in doors, all kinds of shit, looking for me. And... My lawyer told me, and he did, he got me a gunga deal. But he said, uh, whenever I turned, I, I was like four blocks down the road at Denise's house. And I called the county jail, told them where I was. Took the motherfuckers like 45 minutes to get there. And I was wanted for armed robbery is what I was wanted for. And then as soon as they got there, I, I mean, in the whole time, my, every instinct, my body is saying, get the fuck out of here, you know? It was hard turning myself in. I was on the run fucking eight months, years, somewhere around there. I just wanted to make it to Easter, have another Easter with the family. And day after I turned myself in, but then whenever I come walking out the front door, they're all pulling pistols out on me and shit. So what the fuck? I fucking called you. Cuffed me behind my back. I said, you gotta be kidding me, man. But they had some dude uh, hunting me. He wasn't no regular cop. He was some kind of marshal or something. He had shit sticking all over his vest. And they got me in booking, put me in uh, one of the booking cells. And he come walking in asking, where's Mark? And I saw him right here. And he walked up and put his hand to the bar and shook my hands. He shook my hand. He, he said, "He said, where was you yesterday? I said, I was kicking it over at my dad's for Easter. He goes, I thought you might be there. He said, it's like every time I was coming in on you, it's like you knew I was coming. I said, I could feel you coming. <coughs> I went head first on a second story apartment window. It's a good thing I took judo because that's the first thing they teach you is how to roll across your arm and shoulder and come right back up. First thing they teach you in judo is how to fall. Uh... Went, dove right through the second floor window. Went into a roll, popped up, ran. And I can say this now because my mother's, she's dead, but she, uh, 
she drove me across the river. She goes, lay down. <laughs> I, I've laid down, she drove me over to the Missouri side. I said, Mom, you know you're committing a felony, don't you? <laughs> Shut up. Shut up, she said. I said, actually, you're committing a federal offense, Mom. You're taking a a wanted fugitive across state line. Shut up. Just shut up, she said. Keep your head down. <laughs> but, yeah. Yeah, I could feel him coming. I remember I was sitting there on the couch in that apartment. You know where your dad lived? You go past your dad's, and then you, got, you go across the tracks, and then you go around the back of them apartments across from the golf course. That's the apartments I was in. And, uh, I was sitting in, uh, sitting on the couch and I looked at Brad Stuby. I said, they're coming, they're coming. And I stood up off the couch and as soon as I did that fucking front door kicked in and out the window, I went just dove head first out that fucking window. Perfect roll though. I didn't. It takes all the, all the, uh, takes all the impact out of it when you roll across your shoulder like that. And judo, not jujitsu. I took judo. Judo's like wrestling: hip tosses, leg sweeps, shit like that. And first thing they teach you. Our instructor was Quentin. He had this box set up on the mat and whatever. You want to see a witch? Yeah, yeah, this one. Seeing a witch? Uh, oh, okay. yeah, it's right. He, uh, move Irish. He's, he, he, uh, put that box out on the mat and had us diving over that, that box, rolling, popping right back up out of the roll. That's the first thing they teach you because you're getting slung and thrown all over the place. So the first thing he taught us is how to land right so you can get up quick. But you just, that right arm, I just go, go across that right arm and roll right across the shoulder. And uh, it takes a lot of the, if I had jumped out that window and landed on my feet, it'd hurt like hell. But diving and going into a judo roll wasn't bad at all. Got a little cut up from the glass. And then I ran all the way over to my mom's house. I said, I need to get over to the Missouri side of the river and uh, stay with my grandpa for a while. This guy, Dennis, he's in the same organization as me. But the organization I was in in prison, we don't bang on the streets. The way it works is when you're in Illinois Department of Corrections, whatever's on the streets, you got any problems with any other members, whatever, you leave that shit on the streets. When you're in prison, you soldier. Let that, what, what happens in the joint stays in the joint. What happens on the streets stays on the streets. Uh, but me and Dennis, we became friends, but we used to be blood enemies. Uh, he tried running me over. He shot at me. He almost rode his car over trying to run me over that one night. Then I caught him. Scott Osborne was driving, and I caught him on East Main, and they, they were stuck in traffic on East Main. I fucking was punching the window and they were trying to take off. I jumped on the hood. I was stabbing the windshield. They went up on the sidewalk with me on the hood, went down about two blocks and when he turned left, fucking I went flying off the hood and shit. We was, we was, it was getting crazy. And then I was over at Phoebe Shoemakers. I did a video about Phoebe. I miss Phoebe. She was like a mother to me. Um, so over at Phoebe's and 
I was in the backyard, and me and Dennis, I seen Dennis, and we locked up in that backyard. Uh, and I used to like fighting from the bottom, because I had real strong legs from playing soccer all them years. And I'd wrap my legs around a motherfucker, and I could swing good from the bottom. And I could take your air. I could squeeze, the, like a python, just squeeze the breath right out of you. Well, that's what was happening to him. So he tried to take his thumb and stick it in my eye. And I managed to get my hands up on the inside of his and I grabbed him by his ears and his hair and I just pulled his head down and I bit his nose as hard as I could and started shaking my head. And it was cool out. I had on a t-shirt, flannel shirt, jeans, and I thought somebody had a hose on us. I'm like, why is the water so warm? I thought they were spraying us with a hose or something. And he goes, I quit, I quit. And I looked up and his whole nose was just hanging by the nostril. About to take you on a wild... And that's all I was holding his nose on, was just the nostril. And uh, I unwrapped my legs, I guess, cause I was squeezing so hard too, but that blood was just spraying out of his face. And dude that he was with took him to the hospital. And I, I called my my shirt, man. I could bring the flannel shirt out. I had to rinse it out in the sink down in Phoebe's basement and get all the blood out of it. And I called my grandpa up. I was freaking out. I never bit nobody's nose off before. And I said, Grandpa, I don't know what I'm going to do. And he goes, what, what happened? I said, I bit a guy's nose off. And my grandpa started laughing. This is a man that's never been in a fight in his life, and he's laughing. And I'm thinking, what the fuck is he laughing about? And he goes, oh, Mark, what are we going to do with you? About two weeks later, he signed a messenger, Dennis did, said he didn't want to fight no more. And I was like, well, tell him I've been waiting fucking a long time to hear that. And we hooked, we met up, and... <laughs> We walked in right by the elevator restaurant, <laughs> right by where Nate's mom used to live. We walked in that convenience store. I grabbed a fifth of Jack Daniels and a big bag of peanuts with shells. I put them on the counter, looked a dude working the cash register right in the fucking eye. I said, thank you very much, and walked out without paying them. Me and Dennis was walking down that cobblestone towards Leonard's trailer park, just hitting that jack bottle, passing it back and forth. All of a sudden behind us, whoop, the lights go on. And they took us to county and loaded us up in the van, took us over to court, and it was Judge Donovan. And he used to remind me of Harry off night court. He'd always say, next time you're in here, you're going to county. Next time you're here, you're going to county. Well, he read my ticket and he called me up. He said, weren't you just in on a burglary? And I said, yeah, I said, but they didn't have enough evidence to so let me go. And he said, well, you're going to county for this time. You're going to county for this. And he said, scoot over and get your paperwork. So I'm, I, I'm a shuffle over, I'm handcuffed and shackled. I shuffle over. And then he calls Dennis up, he's reading his, and he looks at Dennis, he goes, what? <laughs> you was grabbing the peanuts while Volkerding was grabbing the booze, and the whole courtroom just started busting up laughing and shit. Whenever they arrested us that day, too, that's uh, they took us to City first. And at City, you got four cells in, on the second floor, that's all. And Dennis is in the cell to the side of me here. I can't see into it, but he's arguing with the guards. There's two two uh, valuable cops. And fucking, he goes, bring your ass in here, motherfucker. And I heard him opening up the bars. And anybody that's ever heard it knows that. Doom, 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 that just that dull thud of concrete and steel when motherfuckers are fighting up in the cell. And fucking all of a sudden I hear, shut the bars, shut the bars. He, he ran both them motherfuckers up out of that cell. It was fucking hilarious. 
I was like, get him, Dennis! Get him, Dennis! Fucking. But yeah, then he, he, he got bailed out. And then like six hours late, or the next day, they're like, Bogart didn't bunk a jump. And I'm, I'm like, what? Don't nobody ever bail me out. Fucking. I got bailed out and I walk out and there's Dennis. He, he got the money up and bailed me out of jail. Uh, he's a crazy motherfucker. Crazy. He's like, with the no back down, he takes it to a stupid level. He got in a fight with Brian White. Every one of his ribs broke, both sides of his body. Brian's huge, he's gargantuan. And then the next day, Dennis is trying to get a rematch. It's like, dude, are you crazy? You got all your ribs broken. He shot his uncle's kneecap off. Uh, Dennis is ate up, man. That, that, he, Dennis ain't right. But one thing nobody could take away from Dennis, he's a warrior, man. There's just no back down in that. I had to bite his nose almost completely off his face to get him off of me. Uh... He's a fighting motherfucker. And again, just another scarred up fucking kid, you know. Scarred up fucking kid. That's exactly what he is. Just like the rest of us. Well, I'm gonna hop off here and enjoy my lunch with Amy. Uh, much love to all of you. Peace out.